one, two, three, four, four different videos in this series. And we are cooking soap in the turkey roaster crock pot. If you ever went to Walmart and seen those great big turkey roasters and thought, can I make soap in that? And so we're going to talk about that. And then I'm making a brand new essential oil soap for my website called Crisp and Clean and or Fresh and Clean. I haven't decided. Um, maybe after I smell it. And so I'm going to show you how to make that and give you the essential oil recipe if you want to make it yourself. Plus, I'm going to make my lotion bar soap. And I'm going to show you how to do that with the fun colored embeds. And I'm going to um, also uh, give you a couple of choices in the description as uh, on the different recipes you could use for that lotion bar recipe. And then I'm making my coconut milk floral sunshine soap today. And um, so we're going to do all of those videos. And, it, and this clip will be at the beginning of each one of the videos. And, um, and then it'll start out with how to make each one of these videos. So it's four videos in this series. So stay with us and let's get soaping. Hey everybody. Okay. We're making soap today. And I'm going to do a couple of them with you. So... Let's get soaping. Okay, everybody. This is our turkey roaster. <clears throat> and I'm going to move my light over. Um, on a turkey roaster, most of them have temperatures. And you can heat your oils up on 250. But once you get ready to cook your soap, put it on 150. If you don't, because of the thinness of your roaster pan, it's not a, a crock pot, which is thick. Um, it's thin metal that's coated. Uh, because of that, if you don't, your soap will actually burn. So my soap, the oil has been off to cool, and I've got it completely down to room temperature. That's what I like to do. And so I've got it set on 150. Now I have warm up my, I melt my oils at 250, but I cook at 150. And if you try to do at another temperature, you'll regret it, so just don't do it. So we're talking about how to make our soap in a turkey roaster. So um, with the roaster, it's just a little bit different with the lye. Because you have such so much you're blending at one time with a stick blender. So what I do is I start on one end and I work my way to the other. And I go back and forth. And that helps to disperse some. And, um, and then you want to always make sure that you never let the end of your stick blender come out of the top. Uh, and then we're going to blend it. So I'm going to quickly move you to another location so you can see better. Okay. Now I'm going to go in a circular pattern. And then I'm going to go just, I'm going to do zigzags. And then I'm going to do circles, but not big sweepy circles, just little circles. Okay, now this is where the dangerous part comes in. Because of the, how deep and how much we have, we have to bring the top of our stick blender close to the top. But remember to keep it submerged. I'm just going back and forth slowly. I have my stick blender on high. If your stick blender is more powerful and you're up here on the top, 
you might want to go with low. Now I'm going back down to the bottom. Okay, now you see the white swirls and the oily glassiness floating around? We're not blended. And it sort of looks like curds and whey in here. Okay, now I'm coming back up to the top. Going slow with those circles. We don't want to slosh it out of our pot and have lime oil all over the place. Okay, now see the swirliness? You've got this glassy, swirly look, and you've got the white, soapy look. That means we're not mixed. on with the creamy we've got less glassiness now once I get it to this point I do something different must be stainless steel. This gets the final little bit. A big pot like this is just hard to blend. And your stick blender motor can wear out and blow up before you get it done and you really just can't take breaks. You've got to get this all done at one time. If you have, you could use a wooden spoon, you could use a stainless steel spoon, you could use a plastic whisk, you could use a plastic spoon, but a stainless steel whisk is just perfect. And there you have it. Now we are complete cream with no little swirlies of oil that's not been blended in. And so now we are ready to cook. Now I've got this set on 150 and I'm going to put my lid on and this takes longer to cook because you are cooking it at 150 than your regular crock pot would but you can do I'm, I've got three double batches so that's and my moles my moles hold around six almost six pounds of soap so that's three times six so that is a lot of soap so let's now we're going to keep discussing about the super fatting and and molding out and all the things you can do to work with a big bunch of soap in your turkey roaster so stay with me 
Okay, guys, <clears throat> after a whole hour of cooking, it still has it, you know, did any bubblies or, you know, did the butt crack look as we call it. Um, it's a slow process in this. But it's so handy when you need to do a whole bunch of batches of the same soap, and which I do of this one. And so I'm going to give it a stir after an hour. And we're just going to keep on cooking. We're cooking it at 150 degrees. And we'll just keep on keeping on. Okay. This is our turkey cooker full of soap, and it's still just sitting there looking at me. Uh, no uh, boiling or bubbling or hocus pocus, you know, uh, toil and trouble. I don't know. That just It just sounded funny. Forgive me. I say these funny things when I've been up too late at night cooking soap. It's late. It's late, y'all. Okay, anyway... <coughs> um, you know, it's just something about this big old pot that made me think of those big cast iron pots people used to make soap in. So anyway, so um, this soap will cook longer. If I finished it up now, um, it would just have to cure longer. And I have been absolutely rated on the cedarwood and tea tree. People are buying like, you know, a lady bought 13 bars today and another guy bought 11 bars or 12. So, I am getting down to the wire, so I need to go ahead and cook it longer so that it won't take as long to cure. And so, we're at the two-hour mark, and I'm just going to let her keep perking. Okay, everybody, we're at the two-and-a-half-hour mark, and this is my super fats. I'm doing the cedarwood and tea tree, and I've changed the cedarwood and tea tree to using nutmeg as a spice. Uh, because I have to make so much of it, the slippery elm is hard to keep in stock because if I can't get it online, I have to drive to get it. So I'm adding my super fats, and look, there's big chunks of shea butter and whatnot in here, and it'll take a while for all these to melt out. Um, but we're at the two and a half hour mark. Uh, but you can cook this for probably four hours. Uh, I'm going to cook it for three. Um, three and a half maybe if I get busy with my other soaps. Now I've just sort of halfway blended this. I'm going to let this, the shea butter and stuff in here melt. And then I will stir it up really well. Okay. Cooking in a turkey roaster. Okay, guys. It has been like three and a half hours now. Um, I was busy finishing all of these soaps. <laughs> so I just let it cook. Um, and and I've been just ever so often, I've been going over and stirring it to get the um, color it and the super fats all blended. And because of the fact that we're cooking this on a real low heat, uh, it doesn't take too terribly long to cool. In the past, that's been my record on it. Uh, let's see how hot we are right now. Ooh. I've, just, I've just turned it off. Yeah, it's just getting past 140. Let's make sure we got it good reading on our temperature. I'm going to put a second thermometer in here because we've got such a, a big surface. Okay. Right now, it is saying that it's not, but it's 150 degrees, and we've been cooking it, you know, on 150 degrees. So, and this one here is saying, oh no, this one's went up too. Okay, so 
This one here says that it's almost 160, and this one here says it's a little bit further away from 160, but the cooking elements could have been more on this side, so. Okay, so that one there is saying 155, and that one there is saying like 150. Um, so that is the fluctuation because there's so much soap in the heat and temperatures. So I'm going to put them side by side, and let's see what they do. Okay, 150 over here, and this one has almost went down to 150. So it's, as I said, uh, different temperature throughout. Uh, I had just freshly stirred it, and so the soap closer to the walls is hotter than the soap closer to, you know, to the middle. Um, and so I'm going to let this sit and cool. Uh, it's very fluid, so I'm just going to make sure that it's below 160 by letting it cool just a few minutes and stir it a couple of times, and then we'll add our essential oils. Okay, everybody, I have my soap, and I've let it sit here for about 10 minutes and just make sure that we've got cool down and... Oh crap, I gotta go get a stainless steel spoon. Hang on. Okay. Now I'm going to add my essential oils. And this is cedarwood and tea tree. And it's so much, being three batches, I just put it in a quart jar. <clears throat> and then shake out all the goody okay and now we will stir that up and as I said this is three double batches of soap and that is the same as six four quart crock pots and that's your average size quart crock pot and as you see see the glassy look and then see the opaque look we got to get it all opaque looking again so we got to just keep on stirring And if you have a soap that you're just putting tons and tons of essential oil in there, you know how like sometimes you'll have a soap that really gets a lot of fragrance or essential oil in volume, you know? Um, you might not want to use this method because, you know, as you can see, we cook it longer, but it never really boils good as you might say or bubblies or anything. And so it doesn't cook as much of the moisture out. So, if you use your, one of your recipes that, like my sinus soap, it has tons of essential oils in it for it to work properly. Um, hang on now, let me get you where you can see my molding. And this is the soap mold that my dad makes for me. And I just love them. Big old monster mold. It comes with a divider. Um, so, you can... Um, uh, if you just want to do a half or three quarters, you can. It's very versatile that way because you can still pull it all the way up to the top or mound it up at will because you can put the divider in and um, um, that comes with the soap mold. And you can go to my website, essential-soaps.com and you'll see a link on there, buy a soap mold. 
and um, I use a bungee cord uh, to to uh, hold it together but the sides let down it makes it so easy to get the soap out um, and he makes these for me and he makes them he's on a very limited income um, he was a house painter all his life and uh, and so uh, he was self-employed and and so no pensions and annuities and fancy um, Social Security and so he makes his little extra money selling his soap molds and of course I use them and push them for him so isn't that so cool all right and now um, I'm going to keep filling molds and if I have to if one of them doesn't fill all the way I'll show you how we do the divider otherwise we will cut this soap tomorrow it makes a perfect bar just perfect to fit in your hand it's a perfect bar and um, and whatnot and I'll show you how these soap molds open up and let down and they're just perfect for soap and so if you want to buy one you can go to my website and I, I help him you know he's in his 70s so I help him with all of it he makes them I package them I sell them for him and oh and it makes him so happy okay all right keep watching okay we've cooked our soap in the turkey roaster we've molded our soap in the turkey roaster and now the soap is ready to come out of the molds remember this soap mold is one that my father makes and sells so if you would like to buy one of these molds um, you can find them on my website for sale my dad has a wood shop and he makes them but I help him package them and I help him with all the selling and 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 buying the postage and then he just puts it in his mailbox and off it goes or he takes it to the post office and uh, what's so fun about these is the way they open up and uh, I close them with a um, a, a bungee cord but you can use masking tape or other contraptions and I cover them with Gorilla Tape holding down poly mailer bag the biggest poly mailer bag they sell and usually you can get those cheaper in small quantities on eBay uh, but you can line it with freezer paper and so that is the mold that my dad sells and Keep my scraps picked up. So anyway, so let's cut some of this soap. This is my cedar wood and tea tree soap that I sell the most of. I sell absolutely monster amounts of this soap. So I have to keep a lot of it in stock. So I make three double batches out of whack. And so this is how I cut it with the Essential Depot soap cutter. And um, if you wanted to do the same I score it lightly and I have mine loosened so that it flops all the way over because that's the way I like it um, there's little screws on the side and you can loosen it and after I score it then I take a butcher knife and I cut past the score mark and then I put it back in there And I put it right back where I scored it. So now this soap cooked for like three hours or something. Um, and it never really did, you know, get all bubbly and Vaseline staged. But as you can see, it still made a really good bar of soap. It's nice and hard and just really pretty. I like, uh, I add, um, I add um, nutmeg as the colorant. I was using the slippery elm, but the slippery ham is harder to get in large quantities. And I sell so much of this soap, I have to keep it in stock. And I can't. Uh, I can purchase the nutmeg online from Essential Depot's website, and I like that. It's easier to get. Um, so aren't these beautiful bars? I mean, it's just a perfect bar of soap. 
and it's really good for washing your dog. Just a perfect bar. And then uh, we've got our two little end pieces. And now I put these together. I want to show you what I do. Okay? So let's get this over here on our tray that will roll it out of here and take it to the curing room and uh, whatnot. And I'll have um, the essential oil recipe uh, in the description for the cedar wood and tea tree. And then this bar is just a breeze because you've already got it pre-cut and ready. Okay, so there's another little end piece. And you can just take your finger with hot process soap. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little drift right there at the end. And I just take and, and rub it and it's gone. Let me put these over here because I want to show you what I do with my end pieces. So i got to cut another one to get enough end pieces to show you. So... Let's cut us another one. I just recently sold all my scraps. I had 30 pounds of soap scraps. And they already had the super fats and the essential oils in there. It was just these scraps to a lady. And I was so excited to get to do that. I normally have to rebatch them and, and try to do something productive out of them because I am a um, thrifty person. And uh, so anyway, so uh, I was happy to be able to just um, send them off for somebody else to do that and then just keep making soap. Alright. Okay, now I've got some more end pieces. What I do is, is I take my end pieces and I pick out the thickest ones and I put them on the outside and I put the thinner ones on the inside like that. And then I press and I mark. And I just mar the corners down. Flip it over. Press. Mar the corners. And then I just sort of roll it around on the counter. And ta da! There's a bar of soap for my husband to use, which absolutely loves this kind of soap. So there you go. So there's a bar. I'll just set that out to cure with these other bars. And then I'll put that in the shower. So that's a way that you can. Uh, you reuse your soap scraps on your favorite bars. And another thing you can do is on the, the little drift you get, you can take the whole stack and do that and then take your fingers and do this to it and ta-da! You don't have to fight with it so much uh, with each individual bar. 
and there you go. So there is our perfect bars, and I sell these uh, for people mainly who want to kill head lice, fleas, ticks, um, mosquito, uh, ward away mosquitoes, kill chiggers, deer ticks, um, keep insects off of them. You can actually take a bar if you're on your work shoes, you know, like your gardening shoes, and scrub your shoes with it, scrub your pants legs with it, scrub your skin with it, a dry bar. You know, rub your skin down with it, and bugs just won't get nowhere near you. Or you can take a bath in it and let the foam sit on your skin for like two minutes for a little extra oomph, you know, more uh, absorption time, uh, have the, the smell be stronger on your skin, and then, um, <clears throat> uh, and then there you go. Uh, the bugs won't like you. And, um, and then you can just take a little dry piece with you if you're out hiking or something for later on that day. Um, if the scent, you know, you get to sweating so much that your natural odor pops up. And so therefore, um, you um, can rub some like on your neck and us girls between there and on your wrists and your legs and things and the scent will radiate again on you. So, there you go. And of course, a lot of people purchase this to wash their dogs once a week to kill fleas and ticks, leave it on their skin for two minutes. I tell everybody, if you have a little bitty dog or a sickly dog, you know, limit it. Uh, don't, you know, don't be so heavy handed. Uh, normal recommendation is once a week, twice a week, every once in a blue moon, and if they don't have a flea, give them a break. Don't use it. Uh, because tea tree, even though it's a natural known drug, it is still known as a drug. And so, we don't want to overdo anything, even the natural ones. And uh, the EPA uh, came calling because I had named this soap Bug Be Gone, and um, you have to pay them $100,000 a year if you want to say on your labeling and your website is considered your labeling as well. Um, if you want to say that your product kills bugs and if you want to use the word bug, ward, or kill in the name, you have to pay them $100,000 a year, I believe it is, for that privilege and for the license. And so... I changed the name of the soap to Be Gone, and I and if you look at my website page for bar number 11, you can see um, it was a, my page was approved by the EPA and legal, and uh, you can see what I've put on there. Um, but it is illegal to say that your soap kills things unless you pay for those licenses uh, to the EPA. And um, they do have another license. If you only use cedar wood and you don't use the tea tree, um, then you, it's considered a natural product by the EPA. And you can just pay $600 to each state that you sell it to per year. And then you can say all those things because it only has cedar wood in it. And cedar wood is one of those things, one of those essential oils that's considered a natural agent to ward bugs. Uh, so you can you can make uh, claims. There you go. But now with my mouth, I can say things. Um, the EPA can't regulate that, thankfully, or at least that's what they told me. They said, um, you know, if I if I talk to somebody, I can tell them that my soap kills fleas and ticks. But on my website and on my labeling, I can't do that. All right. So let, I'm going to finish cutting the rest of this soap. Remember. There's three more videos in this series, so make sure you watch them all. All right, now, uh, a lot of people ask me all the time, oh, and by the way, thank you for watching my commercials. It helps me out so much. I get a little tenth or a sixteenth or a, who knows, a little bitty part of a penny every time you watch them. I don't know how small it is. And that adds up. And, um, and so thank you for watching the commercials. Uh, that helps me out, and it keeps me being able to take out the time to make the videos. And then also, uh, thank you for using my link for Essential Depot. Uh, they sell 
have some awesome light and soaking products. Um, this is their coconut oil. This is their molds and baskets. Um, they have essential oils and natural colorants. Great place you can buy my soaping kit. It's like everything you need to make a batch of soap in a box that comes out to you. You can just add water. And um, so anyway, um, you can buy all those things at Essential Depot. And I'm an affiliate with Essential Depot. And if you click on my link and go to the page, it sends a cookie to your shopping cart. And then if you stay on the page and purchase something, I get the points. And then I'm able to turn around and buy soaping materials with those points. And so that keeps me soaping. It also keeps me to be able to do test videos and not have to worry about the fact that I might not be able to use that soap. So it really helps me out. And then I share with you free recipes, free essential oil recipes, and how-tos. So it's sort of a trade-off. <laughs> so in any case, so now at the very end of this video, there will be a little um, video showing you how to find my link because I have somebody or more ask me every day, how do I find your link? And so I decided to put a little clip at the end of the video to sort of show you where my links was. And also how to get to my Facebook chat page where I give out all my free recipes and I have links to all the essential oil blends and things of that sort. Plus, we're a group of soapers. And we have lots of fun. Okay. Bye, everybody. Um, if you look right here on the big picture at the top and you click on the little F for Facebook, that'll take you right to my, my essential soap soapers chat page. So if you make homemade soap or beauty products, click on that little F and you can ask to join the page and be a part of my soaping group. Uh, it's also a great place to ask questions. We help each other. But don't come there if you're a person for being rude to others because we are like big time on being nice to everybody. <laughs> we try to keep it a happy, safe haven. Okay. All right. So enough said. Um, now, right here is some tabs that goes across the top. And used to my links were right here, but they've moved them. Um, and if you click on the About uh, tab, here you will find my links. You will find my um, Buy Soap From Me, that's my website. Join uh, Soap Sellers, that's another page I have. Um, and then, let's see if I can see what I have here. Oh, okay. Um, if you're a member, oh, gotta get. If you're not in the United Continental United States and you'd like to buy from Essential Depot, they have a new website just for for people to purchase that don't live in the United States. And this is a link for that. And then this is um, my Essential Depot affiliate link. And I have to thank you for watching, uh, for using that link. Um, I get points, and then I use those points to buy products with, and it really helps me out on having time and the money and to put the effort in to make these wonderful videos for you. And it doesn't cost you anything to use the link, and, and if you would be so kind as to use it, I really do appreciate it. Uh, when you use, when you click on the link, uh, once you're there, if you purchase, um, it sends a little cookie to the shopping cart. But if you leave the page and come back, I don't get the points. Uh, you have to purchase uh, while you're there and you've clicked on my link. And then this here is my Facebook chatting page. And I know you will love that. It is so cool. We have over a thousand members and it is so fun. All right. And then... Um, I wanted to show one other thing because this happens all the time. Um, let's see where... Oh, I have lots of playlists. Um, I have playlists where I've categorized things. And you can look at my playlist and just watch videos on particular subjects. But let's go uh, back to my uh, channel. Hang on. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And I've changed, I, I set up, a, they wanted me to change to my name, just my channel to be named Kimberly McNutt, but I opened up a Google account, a Google Plus account, 
essential soap by Kimberly McNutt and it took them like four or five months to finally pick it up and they finally asked me if I wanted to to um, connect my to YouTube with that Google account and I agreed so now they'll quit harassing me um, and and it and I've got to keep my essential soap name um, so anyway so if you're on my channel and you go down this is my most recent uploads and I have uh, playlists shown here uh, for you but what I wanted to show you was is if you um, click on a video and this is my little ant video and um, if you watch the commercial um, which this one uh, the commercials haven't got approved on it yet okay so I went ahead and clicked on it anyway anyway if you if you if you watch the commercial I get points for that too <laughs> So anyway, so it really helps me out if you watch my commercials. But what I wanted to show you was, and I don't have it on this one because I don't have recipes in here. But if you scroll down and click on the show more, if I have recipes or anything in a video, when you click on the show more, it opens it up so that you can see those recipes. So if you're ever looking for a recipe on one of my videos and you want to know if, if I put the recipe in the description, you will find it there. Plus, I also put my links there, so you can also find like my Essential Depot link, my website link, and I don't have it yet in this little video because I just I just uploaded that and I haven't put it in there yet. If you want to see how I deal with ants in the soap room, check it out. 